Welcome back to the 20th lecture on bioelectrochemistry. So, we have talked about different kind of electrodes, ion selective electrodes, metal electrodes, detection of analytes like oxygen using amperometry technique, detection of glucose using amperometry technique, that we talked about detection of potassium ions using ion selective electrode, where valinomycin has been impregnated onto the ion selective membrane, which has special affinity or a very specific affinity for potassium ions. We talked about pH detection based on the 0.2 volt potential generated across a glass membrane, when on one side you have the acid and the other side you have a salt solution. Then we talked about a metal electrode example, where we measured the silver ion concentration. Now, we will be closing in on this course. Today, we will talk a little bit about the redox proteins. Biology is kind of a almost a redox chemistry all over the place. Most of the proteins mostly the metal proteins, they are involved in uh, transfer of electron, they are getting reduced, oxidized. You all have heard about AT NADP, NADPH, it is getting reduced, getting oxidized, NAD, NADH one of the strong electron donor, a very potent electron acceptor like oxygen. We have already talked about oxygen detection using Clark's electrode. So, different proteins could be studied, like if you think of the proteins which are embedded in the mitochondria, the proteins which are embedded on chloroplast in the for fourth system 1 and fourth system 2. Similarly, series of heme proteins which are present, series of metal proteins which are present, how these their electron transfer or electron carrier ability or their reduction potentials could be studied. So, think in terms of the electrochemistry. If one could isolate these proteins and embed them on electrodes, then such proteins can be studied. And of course, we have already talked about the major electrodes, which are being used in this situation will be the metal electrodes like platinum or maybe gold, because gold is the most preferred ones, as we have already discussed about it. And nowadays, people are using graphene or carbon electrodes. They are also very powerful tool in terms of uh, allowing the electron transfer to happen. So, one of the strategies which remain is that having a monolayer of such proteins redox protein on surface of the electrode. It is something like, put it, this is our lecture 20, week 4, lecture 5. Okay. So, today we will talk about the redox proteins. metalloproteins and cyclic voltammetry. So, this is the kind of a strategy. So, you have a protein monolayer confined to the electrode surface, the electrode mostly they use gold electrode. So, this is the protein monolayer, which is all these proteins are 
electrically active proteins, they have the power either to accept an electron or donate an electron. Okay. And the green is showing your electrode surface, you are confining your protein on top of the electrons, electrode surface. Now, you have access, you can do two things here. You can apply a potential, one second, let me change the, okay. you can apply a potential and either you can oxidize the protein or you can reduce the protein, because you can allow, you can flood it with excess electrons, if it is an electron acceptor or you can make a deficit of it because you can change the polarity of it. So, think of it for a minute. Say for example, whenever we write this reaction A plus electron making A plus plus an electron becomes A. Okay. Now, and we give a value of the E 0 out here. Now, think of it. You can do this reaction in both direction. You can balance it. You can take the reaction forward. You can break the reaction opposite. You just have to keep on changing cycling it from anode to cathode, cathode to anode, anode to cathode, cathode to anode. And by reversing the polarity, you can actually do this. That is precisely what is being exploited, when we talk about the cyclic voltammetry techniques could be used for such things. So, these proteins, before I get into that. So, such proteins, you can study their electron transfer, how many electrons are getting transferred, at what potential they are showing those kind of traces. You really can use something like a cyclic voltammetry technique, where you are measuring the current based on the applied potential, and you are giving a cathodic potential, something called a triangular pulse. I am not getting into the technical details of it, because that is the beyond the scope of this course, but based on that, you can switch from anode to cathode, you can allow the oxidation and reduction of a particular analyte happening in a cyclic fashion. And based on the path and based on the width or based on the width of or the height of the current, you can figure out how much electrons are being accepted or donated. This n out here actually should be small n n represent the number of electrons. And the width tells you the voltage. Okay. So, what you are having is something like you are cycling your analyte. So, this is an essentially this is an ideal voltanomogram predicted for an adsorbed redox couple. So, here redox couple is here is your protein or whatever, in this case we are talking about the protein, okay. undergoing reversible uncoupled interfacial electron transfer. So, the electron transfer is happening out here, and this applied potential could allow it to go to reversibly in the forward as well as in the reverse direction. Okay. So, these kind of techniques could be used, and, and how we are attaching them some of these metal proteins use a strategy, if they have a cysteine residue, which is a sulfur containing residue, it could bound to the gold electrode. There are self assembled monolayer SAMs, which are commonly called, which are used to interface with the gold electrode to connect to it. So, there are several strategies, you can use conducting polymers, you can use several ways by which you can actually get to the point, where you can study the reaction kinetics. And you can change the milieu out here, under what condition. Say for example, this protein works at a certain pH differently, as compared to different another pH. So, you really can figure all those out, by using this simple electrochemistry techniques. So, the point what I wanted to highlight here, in this class is, as of now, we have talked about the basic fundamental of Nernst equation. That is where we all started, the Nernst equation, which I repeatedly told you, that is the basis of much of these kind of things. Then we talked about the redox potential of different
different uh, compounds or different molecules. So, every protein which is sitting say for example, let us take an example of respiratory chain of mitochondria, where NADH is funneling an electron to the oxygen. While it funnels, so there are three different complexes which are present there. Each complex had a different electron binding capacity. As a matter of fact, oxygen is one of the potent acceptor, but other three complexes of proteins are have a different binding affinity. How you test that? Now, if you could isolate those proteins on top of an electrode, you actually can figure out what is the binding affinity of these kind of things. So, similarly, if we look at the photosystems, where you have series of complexes like BF complex, quinones you have uh, iron sulfur clusters, you have series of them sitting there and each one of them are sitting. If you see the photosystem, you will see each one of them are sitting at different redox potential. And that essentially means, each one of them have a different electron acceptance power. So, if we know these things, how we really can like you know utilize them, could we really understand the kinetics at the electrode surface, how the electron transfer is mediated. So, all these different kind of studies falls under one of the very potentially challenging area, which is coming up is the bioelectrochemistry, where electrochemistry is taking a forefront in most of the biological measurements. So, it has two aspects, well on a, on a concluding note, one is the biosensor aspect how what we have talked about the glucose sensor, we talked about oxygen electrode, we talked about potassium measurements, we talked about silver measurements, we talked about the pH, there are urea sensors, which could be used in milk and as well as in urine and several other things, wherever the urea is, is one of the analytes. So, that is one key area. Similarly, we can detect hydrogen sulfide, we can detect NO, we can detect uh, carbon monoxide. Similarly, several vapor or um, volatiles could also be detected using electrochemical tools, like electric nose, we talked about it. So, in a sense, bioelectrochemistry has two aspects. One aspect is the biomedical or uh, biosensor approach. So, if I had to put it like this, what are the different potential areas where this area can move? Bio electro chemistry one of the potential area is biosensors. Biosensors could be further divided it into environmental sensors, it could be soil, water as well as air. Similarly, there is a bio medical sensors, which includes oxygen, carbon monoxide, electrolytes, H 2 S likewise so and so forth. And you have another area of bioelectric chemistry which deals with uh, energy conversion proteins, that is in photosynthesis, oh, oh by the way NO synthesis and 
mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. Apart from it, there is another area which we have not discussed, which is the area of bio fuel cells is beyond the scope, because in 20 lectures we really cannot cover from the fundamental basics. Biofuel cells, another area which is more on the energy sector. So, if we realize it that bioelectronic chemistry is an is a, is a old technique, yet it always have a scope from fundamental studies to all the way to the industrial application. Its uh, spectrum is pretty wide ranging application it has, and that necessitates a reasonable knowledge or you know ok knowledge of analytical chemistry, acid based titration, oxidation reduction, little bit knowledge about electrochemistry, little bit knowledge of physical chemistry and a very sharp insight, where all such techniques could be utilized in biology. Whether it is an action potential measurements, which is a case of concentration cell, whether it is ion channel studies, whether it is uh, environmental sensors. Okay, by the way, that part I have forgotten to mention, whenever we talk about biological sensors, we talk about you know patch clamp, amperometry, voltammetry, all these different techniques, which of course, we could not really cover in depth detail, because of paucity of time. But it is a very interesting area, where what I have tried uh, all throughout is to get the basics right. Once the basics are kind of clear in your brain, then you always can apply it for more better understanding of the instrumentation part of it. So, with this I will close in the course, and I hope it has helped you to understand some of the basic fundamentals. Of course, uh, I could not really cover as much wide spectrum as I could, but at least I try to ensure that the basics are clear out there. Thank you.